Well, hi, and welcome back to my beautiful office. Today's subject is how I set up the R6 for any camera to photograph and film in a forest environment. So we're going into great detail here of how I go about each one. Now, this has come from one of my viewers. He's inquired about whether I could do this for him, especially about the R6, but this, anything I'm going to talk about, you can do on any camera, even if it's a DSLR. Setting a camera up when I first come in, so that it's ready for action in an instant as I'm walking through the reserve. First off, something that I don't hear anyone talk about, and that is metering modes. Now, when I'm in a forest environment, it's essential to use a spot meter. When I'm out in open paddocks, I'll use center weighted. So that's all I use, just those two modes. And the reason why I use a spot meter in a forest environment is my subject might be in the shadows. So there might be filtered light coming in behind them. I don't want to know about the background. I can see what's happening in the background. I want my subject to have the proper exposure on it. So that's why I use a spot meter because yeah it's either in the shadows or it's sitting on a branch in full sunlight now if i use center weighted it's going to take in the background more than my subject because it might be just a small bird or you know, blue book owl something like that and it might blow out the highlights of the branch that's sitting on if it's in full sunlight and it as well if it's got you know very reflective feathers so center weighted that's what will have tend to happen so i just stick with a spot meter and it works brilliantly in a forest environment now because in this reserve especially the birds are small and the animals are small so i like to have a shutter speed of a thousandth of a second to freeze the action because if it's going like this, looking around, like most of them are, they're very active birds in here, and very active animals, like the Agile Antichonus, I have to freeze it. We're going to get blurry images otherwise. Now, I'm also using TV mode, so that's time value mode, or shutter priority. Just wandering through the reserve, I find that I like the aperture to go up and down. Now, with my other cameras, um, they didn't really do that very well uh, but the R6 is so trustworthy that's what I'm using now I used to use manual so the aperture can go up and down and do whatever it likes that relieves me from worrying about it and missing out on something that happens instantly in front of me ISO on a dimly lit day I'll have it on 3200 ISO so that gives me some flexibility with that aperture, you know, it, most of the time it's screaming at me, it's flashing, that it's not open enough. But uh, I don't like to go much over that with the R6, which I've already talked about on a previous video. But that's how I'm running with the camera, with uh, my exposure. Is shutter speed set to a thousand, aperture can go up and down, and the ISO to suit the conditions that I'm in. And so it's dual back button focusing, it's a must. You really need to do this on the R6 and uh, all the new mirrorless cameras that are coming out from Canon that allow you to have eye and um, tracking on a separate button. So that's what we've got. I'll run from one spot straight away onto my subject. Hopefully that works because there is a bit of a problem here, but I've already explained that in another video. Um, and then I'll go to eye detect so it's very quick to go from one to the other and I'm also running from 20 frames per second and single shot now I always start off with single shot because unless my subjects doing something amazing it's two birds fighting or you know something that I need to capture a bit Particular moment that I mightn't be able to get my doing it myself will go to those 20 frames per second so I have control over the camera I'm nice and relaxed once you get into 20 frames per second I reckon most people will be the same as me you're a little hypey <laughs> spraying them off 
So I hate that. I like to stay nice and calm and be relaxed. Now for filming in a forest environment, we have two modes. We go over to our um, actual video mode on the dial and we can also just hit the record button, which is what I'll talk about first. So I'm photographing something and I see an event that I want to capture that I know I won't be able to get it if I try and muck around getting all my settings set up in the video mode. So at an instant to capture an event, you just simply hit that record button, it goes into automatic and we, we get that shot. Now, of course, we don't have any control over our exposure. Um, so, you know, that comes with some flaws doing it that way. Depends on what's happening, how fast things are happening. But, uh, it can get choppy. So if our, our aperture's up too high, we'll get a little shuddering sort of effect. And with our uh, shutter speed, if that's up far too high, will get a choppy look about the image. That's just something that hopefully it's not noticeable and we, you know we capture this beautiful event and it's all done. But what I have just found out yesterday was that if I use exposure compensation in TV mode you can do that and I've been experimenting with it with with this camera to see whether uh, how much it affects and it only affects my still images slightly it's very hard to tell so it's hardly worth using but I have been playing with it and checking it out more and more lately and yesterday I had it set because it was so d dim and dark in here I had it set right up to three so plus three so wide open now when I pressed the record button yesterday for an, a particular event it was way overexposed so it's not totally automatic when we press that button there are some things obviously that we can manipulate here so that's something I'm going to have to experiment with a lot more but it was totally overexposed and useless let's talk about manual mode we don't get all the settings you get on the R5, that's got all your aperture priority and shutter priority and manual mode. But all we get with this is either going to filming mode, we can go fully automatic if we want in there as well, or take control and use manual. So it's just tweaking everything yourself. But the awesome thing is that it is completely separate from photographing, so it stays the same as we left it with the day before. I'm filming in the highest quality that I possibly can, and that's 4K, 20 frames per second. I very rarely use 50 frames per second, because it, does, it doesn't stuff my computer up, but some of my programs do not like it, so trying to replay it, it's hard to see. And it just causes dra unnecessary dramas, because it's un you only use that if you want to slow down things a little bit. But this has a really good slow motion mode. So I'm just stick with 20, 25 frames per second. So that means my shutter speed has to be double that, so it's 50, so it stays on 50. Now my aperture is only used for uh, exposure. Can't really go over nine. That's when you start to get a bit of a flickery, choppy, choppy sort of look about the image. We're going to film with this and we've got the time we need ND filters on the front to help with that exposure. I'm wandering through the reserve and something happens in front of me and I've got time to set myself up. I will go to auto ISO. Just gives me that flexibility if I have to keep moving around as my subject goes through the undergrowth and comes out, something like that. It's moving from one environment to another and the exposure is changing. Uh, it's very reliable and very good with the um, auto ISO on this, so that's what I tend to do. All right, I think we've waffled on enough. I'm gonna take you through the events that happened yesterday, starting with me walking through the reserve 
and getting to the back of the reserve, not far away from where I am, uh, I saw a dusky antichinus on the side of the track looking for food. So it was coming in and out of the undergrowth. So with the reach of the RF 100 to 500 L lens, I was able to get up reasonably close but stay back enough that it wouldn't see me and I wouldn't disturb it. So it eventually popped its head up. I took a couple of shots and one of them, I had some beautiful eye contact with it. So it saw me. I'm going to soon take you over to the best event and that's where I got these action shots, the Agile Anticonus, where, yeah, it's just amazing. Now over the years I've been attempting this and I fluked it twice. I've tried everything to try and get these action shots. I've been in beautiful conditions with full sunlight and just with the 7D Mark II, it couldn't do it for me. And to keep up with the subject was hard because of blackout. So getting the shutter speed right up high to 8,000 didn't work. Tracking, not at all in the forest environment on the 7D Mark II. So we bought this camera. I had two much solid months in full on sun and I had rattled off like 2,000 images and got nothing. iDetect was working, tracking was working on my subject, but I just couldn't get those action shots of it in the air. It had, the focusing system would drop off. So I'd go to single point, I've tried that. I tried lots of things. So I thought the next time this event happens, I'm going to have to think outside the square. So let's head over to nesting box number two, where yesterday after the dusky event, I spotted an agile antichinus female bringing nesting material up into the nesting box. Well, this is nesting box number two. It's a stump two meters high that I've converted into a nesting box for the agile antichinus. So I've got a fiberglass top on it. I can put my video camera on there, the XF400, that has infrared so I can film it live. And I put my trail camera in there as well to see what's happening 24 hours a day so I can continue studying. I'm getting leeches here every now and then, so I might be doing that sort of thing, looking every now and then. Now, so that I get my subject into the position that I want it to be in when I'm photographing and filming, I've got this branch as a stage. So I've, on the other side there, I've drilled a hole so that I could put some honey in to draw it out. So when it comes out from the nest, it will come down to where I want it to go first, not come down the side here and nick off so that I can't photograph or film it. I want to control as much as I can and get it into the perfect environment for me to be able to get awesome photographs. As I said, I've been trying to get action shots of it. And I'll show you a bit of footage now of how fast this animal is. So it's extremely explosive with its speed. And that makes a focusing system struggle. I'll just show you a slow motion clip I took yesterday. Now that's how they move. They're jumping, they're bounding in the air. And that's the action shot that I want. Now I'm because I had so many attempts before, I thought that I've got to think outside the square. How am I going to do this? So as I saw the event happening and I've shot over to my seat over there, got myself comfortable, I thought, right, the only way I'm going to get this is spray and pray. Put a single focus point, a small one, and follow it as it goes up and focus on this branch. And as it goes, if it comes up the side here or on the other side, uh, get it as close as you can, but keep focusing on the stump itself so that hopefully we can fluke every now and then it being on the same focus plane as what I've got the focus on. So that's how we achieved it. That's how I eventually finally got amazing action shots of it in the air. Now my first few attempts trying to stay on here uh, it kept the focusing system kept dropping out going to the background 
So I had to change case three. I've got an agile endocrinus right behind the camera coming back. It's probably this female that's living in here. Yeah, that just wasn't working, so I've gone back to auto. I always seem to go back to auto. It just seems to work the best, especially in the forest environment. So then I was getting more consistently getting photographs in focus on the branch. So after a few more runs of her coming up and down, I started to see that I might have gotten some sharp images. And as it, the uh, event kept continuing, I'm thinking I must have a few. But I couldn't, I couldn't stop to have a look. I had to keep going. Everything looked like it might be all right. So let's just keep going. Now, because I was using a very high ISO, that brings our buffer down. So the amount of photographs I can take in a burst. So that was 89. Now in the end, because it went for half an hour, I rattled off 1,500 shots. <laughs> and, oh man, it was just friggin' awesome to get home and go through 1,500 images. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> to f pick out every now and then in focus action shots. And I've rated them from one star to three stars. So I've got 20 action shots. My eyes were just lighting up as I see that the eye and the head were perfectly in focus. Now, I, yeah, I've rated them with stars from one to three. So they're ones that, they're not bad images. They're, the Agile's sharp, a uh, fair bit of detail there and it's fair, not a lot, but a, enough. But the pose was wrong. So it's not a fantastic looking pose, but we're still going to keep them. A star rating of two, I've got seven. So that means they're in the right pose, but there's something still quite not right. Whether that's the background, there's something distracting there, not enough detail on the fur or something like that. But otherwise it's in a good pose and it's reasonably sharp. Now three, everything's worked beautifully, of course. It's a very high standard image. Well, I didn't get any three star images out of that lot. And after going home and processing a lot of the two star ones, I've actually brought them back to one star. Yeah, just a lack of detail on the fur and things like that. We need that direct sunlight on my subject and keep going what I've just worked out. Just spray and pray. Keep focusing on that branch. Yeah, we're going to get something beautiful eventually. A rare event is that I come across an agile female bringing up leaves to the nest for that long, half an hour. That was just amazing. Normally I they might do four or five runs with that, taking some leaves up and then they're off hunting. So if I can get that again, that'll be awesome. But um, get those opportunities where they're coming up to get some honey, uh, try and get those action shots like that. Just focus on the branch, my stage, and hopefully we get something. That's all I've got for you for today. Hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face that's down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. It'll take you to my channel. And I forgot to say in the middle of that was if you like this video, Give me a thumbs up, it'll help my poor little channel grow. And boy, does it need it. So much appreciated if you could do that for me. It'd be awesome. Uh, now getting back to my channel. Yeah, I talk about photographing and filming wildlife in a forest environment. 
buy camera equipment, give you my honest opinion on them. And when I go on adventures, I take you with me. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing, filming models. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.